This spear gun is so big, it feels like I'm diving down to 92 feet while holding a tree trunk. I won't return to the surface for 1 minute and 55 seconds. And when I do, my spear gun will no longer be loaded, and my spear will be lodged into the back of a 150 pound dog tooth tuna. In the past, I've really only speared small doggies, like this one. And although baby doggies are powerful for their size, big ones like these are a totally different animal. Or so I've heard. But before you even get the chance to pull a trigger on a monster fish, it takes a lot of time, a lot of money, and a lot of effort to even find one. And that's the easy part. The hard part comes after you pull the trigger. But first, you need the right gear. I've got this five and a half foot long wooden inverted roller. It's made by Andre Spear Guns here in Bali. It's incredibly powerful, and it's made specifically for big, fat fish, like dogtooth tuna. It's got an effective range of over 20 feet. But as you're about to see, range is not all that matters. Your spear also needs enough velocity to punch all the way through the body of a giant fish. Because trying to spear a big fish with an underpowered spear gun is like trying to puncture your hand with a toothpick. Sure, you might break the skin and it might even hurt a little, but it's not going to go all the way through. What you need is a big metal nail and an even bigger hammer. If you don't believe me, just ask Jesus. Anyways, in addition to a big powerful gun, you also need a big powerful float, or two. The floats are attached to a rope, and the rope is attached to a smaller line, which is attached to the spear with this little metal thing. It's called a crimp. Anyways, aside from investing time and money into the proper gear, you also need to invest time and money into traveling as far away from civilization as you possibly can. According to Wikipedia, it takes decades for a dogtooth tuna to get big. And here on the island of Bali, there are so many fishermen around that it's rare for a doggy to have the opportunity to grow that big before being caught. And so it's much, much easier to find big ones in remote places, uninhabited by humans. Generally speaking, the further away from human civilization you get, the closer you get to doggy civilization. And the best spots are the ones that are so far away that you can only get there by chartering a liveaboard boat. Which we did. I'd be lying if I said that my ego had nothing to do with wanting to catch a big fish. But ego isn't the only reason. I also want more views on YouTube. I'm actually not joking about that. But the main reason I'm doing this is because of the challenge. I want to see if I'm capable. Man vs. Beast is the oldest story in the world, and I believe there's something inside all of us that craves that challenge. Also, sashimi. Apparently the flesh of a big doggy is much, much tastier than that of a small one, because the meat is fattier. So, here I am, thousands of dollars in debt, thousands of miles away from my family back in New York, living on a boat off a remote island in the middle of nowhere, almost 100 feet deep, searching for a monster and I find two. My entire spearfishing career has been leading up to this moment. While both of these fish are big, one of them is clearly bigger than the other. But the bigger one won't come close enough for a shot, so I line up on the smaller one and prepare to pull the trigger. But at the last moment, I decide to go for the big boy, even though it's a longer shot. Because, well, remember that ego I mentioned? See all that blood coming out of the fish? That means that my shot placement is good. I've hit some vital organs and the fish is badly wounded, but it's not over yet. As I swim back up to the surface, the fish pulls my floats down so fast that it looks as if they're filled with lead rather than two atmospheres of pressurized air. But then something horrible happens. The line becomes slack, and as the floats resurface, my heart sinks. I pull the line up from the depths, but I already know that there's nothing on the end of it, not even my spear which means that it's still stuck in that poor fish. Remember that little metal crimp that holds the shooting line to the spear? Well, apparently, I didn't squeeze it tight enough during installation. And when the fish pulled that second float under, it snapped under the pressure. And that's it. That's the end of the story. It's one of the most upsetting things that's ever happened to me, and probably to that fish as well. I understand that some of you might be judging me right now, and I don't blame you. But, there is no but. It's fucked up. But, I can't help but wonder if you judge someone the same way who throws away a half-eaten cheeseburger at McDonald's. Anyways, fishermen are famously very secretive about their fishing spots. But, I don't want to be secretive. I want to give as much value to you 
the viewer as possible. And so, for that reason, I've decided to share the exact GPS coordinates of where I found these big fish. This is valuable information because fish like these are not easy to find. And so, if you want to see where I was fishing for them, hit the link in the description for the exact GPS coordinates. And thanks for watching.